Good morning, uh, this is Ferrat and uh, I'm going to show you today Autodesk 3D Studio Max Elementary course in my second unit lecture 5 I'm gonna talk about the concept of uh, the advanced tree in this lecture I'm gonna go a little bit advanced on the concept of modeling and uh, in the concept of modification and transformation so in this lecture specifically I'm going to talk about uh, advanced transformation which is a line array and then uh, advanced modeling talking about specifically about the compound uh, compound modeling which is boolean and pro boolean with the difference in how they work uh, advanced modification so we need to know the concept of uh, object and sub object modification and object and sub object modeling actually and then we're going to talk both on edit mesh and edit poly very rough and very quick introduction to them so first the advanced transformation so in this part i'm going to show you two other transformers uh, you know that in the beginning we saw the the basic transformers is the move rotate and scale and then we have a mirror and uh, now we have a line and array uh, a line for example is really important to transformer that allow you to put things aligned or based on the existence of a specific line where you can put that line for example in the middle of those objects and or the center of those objects as such a case so the head of this deer and this guy here the table all aligned their centers to each other and you can see that in lots of interior and architecture examples uh, you can have another line of alignment, which is this guy here, which is the lower part of all object is actually aligned to each other, or the top part or the top line run in the top parts of those objects. So uh, the procedure, I'm going to show you the procedure. It's very easy and very basic, straightforward. Uh, that's the interface of the command. And I will start by making this very simple and uh, quick uh, example. So I'm going to 3D Studio Max and I'm going to use the top of view this time. Uh, this is the box, the first box that I want to create. And uh, let's just make sh this one uh, look like, uh, you know, shaded. So I'm pressing F3 and then I'm going to create another box here. I'm gonna select this guy and uh, probably change the color into red just to easily distinguish between them so one uh, fully cubicle and the other guy here is a rectangular so again back to the 3d <coughs> <coughs> sorry uh, I'm gonna show you now that those two objects are located in a different places so in order to align them we have lots of method and we can deal with lots of method. Easiest method, of course, is like <clears throat> select this guy and right click on it and hit zeros here, you know, and then selecting this guy and put zeros. Probably we saw that in the previous lecture on the class, and uh, that's easiest way to start up modeling a, a complicated geometry based on the existence of other smaller objects. Uh, to align them all to the zero zero but what if they are located somewhere else and you don't want to refer to another point another reference point you want this guy to stay in the place and this guy is to follow it so uh, to do that select this and then go to the align command here and then select the target now look you can have uh, an alignment based on X Y Z position so those three are all gonna be the same so you have to move the same X the same Y and the same Z and the Z in the boxes cases are in the lower part of its center and now I'm using the pivot to pivot to do that so if I hit OK now it's actually placed where it's exactly should be and as you can see they are touching the lower part of the center together anyway that's that's fruitful and that might be helpful for lots of people to do uh, or you might need to add another step after this one which is to make this guy above this guy 
or this guy attached to the edge of it. Let's let's do that. So I'm gonna hit a line and then you can select this object and this time instead so you, first you might need to do this on all axis and pivot to pivot then you come and you say uh, I need just the Z this one and I need the minimum of that box to be on the maximum of that box and see like that now it's it's exactly on the top of each other you can do the other way around like this if you know what I mean and that's based on the Z axis so that's a, that's a good cool thing so again first you might need to put them all together center to center pivot to pivot hit apply that's first because they might location it might locate differently or might be placed in a different location then you can go ahead and say I just need the X clear those and then say I want the minimum with the maximum of that guy and they will be placed adjacent to each other as if you are arrange them in a row okay and that will be really useful for us that's basically what I want to do with the, 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 the location of the align and by the way you can, you can do the same thing for the rotation so you can follow the rotation of an object and you can align that on scale too anyway so that's for me is for uh, basic information about uh, the align which is uh, very important and uh, very basic for us as an architect to create a composition or to place objects above each other rather than just use the move command only. Now the second transformer is array and as the name goes it's just to create a series of objects that align to each other or sorry that uh, relate to each other based on a specific uh, angle or a specific direction and also a fixed amount. So usually it happened here in a 3D Studio Max in a rectangular or a linear way and a circular way or a radial way. So either this or that. Anyway, in the rectangular way, it's you can make it just a one-dimensional or linear array. And in this case, it's just a matter of making a row of an object. So only one dimension is involved in this process. So that's the first that's the first option available for us. So instead of uh, just uh, talking about that, uh, I'm gonna open the 3D Studio Max and show you. Anyway, this is the interface, and that's the 1D array option. And here you say, you know, like you give the distance, and um, it's actually uh, Max allow you to repeat that object based on that distance and to create the required amount of account here or count here. So here's six, so six here, and the distance between each one of them is 20. Uh, maybe really you need to understand one thing, and the concept of array, you really understand to know your units, and you really know to understand the basic object that you are trying to make array, what is the dimension of it before you jump. And given numbers that might be really big or really smaller than uh, it should and give you an um, ununderstandable uh, results of the array. So, anyway, let's go to uh, 3D Max. So that's Max. So I'm gonna get rid of those guys, and I'm gonna create my poor little teapot here. So that's guy. That's that. That's the teapot. And in here, I will go to uh, array. You you will not find it under this usually. And you go to tools, and from the tools you go to array here. It might be looking a little bit scary for the first time you open this. It could be intimidating, but don't worry about that. It's quite easy. It's basically those are the transformer, and as I say, the array is a type of a transformer. It's an advanced type of a transformation. So you're gonna find your move, rotate, and scale, but this time it's categorized onto sides either give an incremental value or you give the total value so for example in move if you give an incremental value of x and that's technically what we're going to do you're going to move you're going to define that this teapot and the next copy of the array will say let's say 200 mil and then the next one will follow the same rule if you push that here and give an x value of the total that means you're giving the first option of the first member and the last member of the array you give them, for example, 2 meter, and by the knowing of you need 10, 
uh, max will divide the 2,000 on a 10 and give you the increment or find out the increment for you. And it depends on what you need, actually. If you know the, the actual final distance between the first member of the array and the last member of the array, so go ahead and use total. While if you don't know that and you know the incremental distance between each column, for example, and you know the number of the columns, so go ahead and use the increment. So anyway, I'm going back to incremental. So don't fall in the main mistake that most of the array people fall in. You have to select the guy, you have to go to modify, you have to know how much is this. So let's say it's 10. So that's my array, so that's my my teapot. So now I know that I don't give like a 10,000 here or 1 or 0 0.1. I have to give a reasonable, reasonable distance between this guy and this guy. So let's say 50. All right. So the amount of array, uh, I can make them here in the one dimension. And let's say they are 5. So let's hit the preview. And you can see it's easy. It's just create 5 copies between each one of them is technically uh, five, uh, sorry, 50 units, which whatever units I'm using right now, if you like that, just hit OK. And that's it, you get, uh, you get, your, uh, <clears throat> you get your array uh, being done for you. What my windows want, uh, yeah, remind me later, whatever. So now that's, that's uh, basically what it does. It's, it's linear, as I said, so it's one dimensional, you know, like, that's axis only change. You can go ahead and you know repeat that process. So, and by the way, if you go right to click here and you go extras, you can get this. You know, you can dock it or you can keep it floating. That's array again. And the lovely thing and the ugly thing in the same time in array, it's to store your previous setting, and and that can be really annoying for people, especially when you are in the first eight ages or first stages sorry from learning uh, array uh, because you're going to go change in the y for example to push it vertically and you forgot that you have to erase this and that's i always suffer with my student so i highly recommend it for you to go here and uh, try to reset this and there is a reset button here and it remove everything any previous setting that you have now you add your 50 to the y and hit a preview and you're going to see that they are moving you know 10 copies that way with the 50s. Uh, I can go undo, or actually, I just put minus 50 because it's still in preview. You see? Now they are downward, and if you go Z, they're gonna be vertically. Uh, the common mistake is I said that you get this from your previous setting, for example, and then you add 50 here without canceling the Y, and you're getting, you're getting this, you know, they are moving in X50 and at Y50. It's still linear, but it's the combined the effect of both X and Y, as you can see. Now, that's it about the linear or the one-dimensional uh, array. So the second part is the rectangular 2D array. And it's as the name goes, it's create rows and columns. So you know the one that we have now that have the effect of both X and Y, this is linear because that's a line. So don't conflict between linear if they have two axes, X and Y, and the two-dimensional rectangular one. The two-dimensional rectangular one, that's a linear because they had a line drawn here, one line. While here there is a rectangle and there is rows and columns. So don't, you know, don't conflict between them. And in order to activate this, you need to inflect both changes here in one dimension and two dimensions. So here, basically. So let's go back to our poor teapot again and undo the whole thing. Get back to it here and then go to the array. Again, I'm hit reset. So max will change that to the default. And again, here. I'm gonna say 50, for example, in X, and I'm gonna say, let's say, eight copies in the one dimension. Now I open the two-dimensional thing, and while I'm moving in the X that way, you know, now you need to affect the Y. So let's say another 50 in the Y, and instead of one, let's have four. Let's see the preview. See, it's have eight, 
in X and you do that in here and in here and then 4 in Y and that's the amount of distance between those so don't add another mistake don't add the Y value here this is for the 1D only and you get, get you can get this result and that's what we technically need and now let's jump straight forward to the 3D so again take that and decide that you need for example three levels and that's the Z again another 50 see now we have three levels which is again 50 between each level those each one of them made of 8 by 4 so it's really nice to you know understand the topic that uh, I'm trying to give you it's a cubical array here and you can see now we have 1d 2d and a 3d and the 1d is here and x so when you have when you decided the one dimension that's the for example the x for it when you add the second one the 2d and you have here in 1d x put the y and in the 3d put the other one and you get this uh, cubical uh, system the round array or the polar array or the circular array you're gonna get, you're gonna get find that and uh, lots of uh, lots of definition based on whatever book you're gonna read and it's also have its own 2d and 3d version so in the 2d process all right so you need uh, I'm gonna reset or cancel actually you need to say that you determine that object location let's me put it in zero zero and then push it let's see in X uh, uh, I don't know 200 like that now in order to make an array for that object if I hit that directly here and I of course I have to reset everything here and that's my rotation here so if I just go ahead and I added an incremental value of the rotation around the Z so let's say like say 15 and it's gonna go three copies only and hit a preview see it have nothing to do with the the idea that I was thinking about. I was thinking it's gonna go like making a circle, uh, and instead it's rotated around its center, which is actually rotating around its pivot point, which is located in the center. And you see the incremental value. It's just defined that from this guy and this guy that is 15 and another 15. Both are not really what I needed, so I'm gonna cancel, and now I'm gonna open the hierarchy and affect pivot point only for that object so now if you move you see you're gonna affect or you're gonna change the pivot point of that object not the object itself based what we what what we have in here zero that so you're gonna put it based on a well-known location and then turn that off now go back to your array let's try the same setting now let's have 15 here again in the incremental so I need three copies and the distance is 15 or the angle actually 15 preview and let's see what happens so now it's more obvious amount. and they are rotating around the z-axis and yeah I made a messed up here because the 50s is still and the, and the y here so again that's why I keep saying keep hitting the reset button for God's sake now again 15 and then 3 here you don't need the 10 and you can see that really easy oh, that's there is a 3 copies and the angle between each copy is 15 again usually we don't do that if we're gonna need to do this we need to consider the use of total especially with the rotation and notice when you say 3 and then you say 15 in the incremental give you a total of 45 degree lovely isn't it so it's calculating here based on what you give here and the you know vice versa so I'm gonna go 360 love that number now it goes out now you get this tri star Mercedes you know thing so you go out here and instead of a 3 let's go 12 you see now we have a clock of a teapot kind of you know drive you to be hungry 
So that's that's about it. So that's a 2D rotational, and it's happened on all based on the same plane. And instead of giving an each increment value, I give the total overall of 360. And then I gave 12 amounts of copies that I needed it. And if I have if I'm happy with this, I'm hit OK. And don't forget that I'm making an instance copies or an instance clone of that. They have a relationship linked based on their parameter of modification. You can make them copy if you want them to be 100% uh, separated. Anyway, you go OK and you get your uh, polar or rotational or radial, uh, radial uh, array, whatever you're going to call it. And it's a, the 2D copy of it. Now, now that's, uh, that's important. And that's uh, really nice. Now, you can go and make a 3D copy of this, or what we call it, spiral one. So in this one, we have to change the Z value of the move during the process of rotation. So instead of having only rotation, we're going to have rotation and move to determine uh, or actually to change the rotation and to increase the height of the object while it's rotate. So we are making the same thing here. So I'm going to hit undo and I'm going to open array we have the same setting, 360 and 12 copy, to rotate them on the same plane, but during that, I need the second copy to jump vertically, 50 only as an increment, only in the Z, okay? And let's hit the preview, and we see in the top of you, it's look like the same, but voila, you see, you know that? You see the 3D thing, how it goes, like, you know, it's a spiral issue here. Yeah. So now let's make it, you know, let's uh, more obvious. So let's make this uh, uh, instead of sorry, let's make this instead of 360. Let's make it 720. That means two rotation or two laps, and two four here. And I hit OK, and now you see, I have two rounds with more keyboards to create a spiral system. Uh, that's a spiral array, so that's spiral you might think you might find it uh, useful especially when we make uh, a horizontal or spiral uh, stairs anyway Okay, so I'm gonna get go back undo and By the way, you might need to make a rotation based on the other object and I'm gonna explain that in the next uh, tutorial so that's about it here in the array. Now, uh, finishing with the advanced transformation, now let's have another concept of advanced. So let's talk a little bit about advanced modeling, and we're gonna have here in the compound modeling. Uh, now, the, uh, we talked previously about lots, actually, about different types of modeling. We talked about primitive modeling or parametric modeling, and uh, specifically the primitives which we have standard and extended which we make all the, you know, the ball and the spheres or in the box, all of them, you can create them from nothing, actually. And then we talk about the 2D modeling, and then we extrude that, and that's also a different type of uh, modeling. And uh, now, uh, technically, we have a new method, and we call it compound modeling, and it basically doesn't start, or don't start from the beginning, it usually doesn't do that and it need other object to start from and we're gonna have boolean and pro boolean as a good example for that so let's start up with boolean and before I might need to get rid of that box that teapot and create a box here and that is my new guy here and I will go ahead and create a cylinder and that's my cylinder and they are overlapping in an area as you can see so as you notice this is primitives modeling and I start from nothing and it allow me to create the geometry I want the basic geometry I want usually you start up from uh, usually you start up from uh, those objects and then you create the component modeling which is as the name goes they are more complicated and you can find that here and those your your compound modeling and notice that most of them are great 
and that's because I didn't select anything yet so in order to activate them select anything here and you see the difference no, no not selected most of them they don't accept to start from nothing while when you select the guy you know everyone get happy and wait for you to do whatever you want so I'm gonna go boolean and then I'm gonna add operand before I add operand just I'm moving that up and let's go subtract you know so you get add an operand operand here like it's gonna be like this guy and this guy both the same object after you do the subtraction so that will be A because I selected first and then add operand that will be B and because I picked union I don't know I'm double I'm pretty sure I had uh, subtraction selected but I don't know that's subtraction and and add operand and it cut and I don't know why that happens and it switched to union anyway subtraction now you can see that it's actually cutting operand B or the second guy from the first guy and that's what you have as a process of cutting this you can make them union and in this case you get they're gonna combine them for you in one object and if you notice if you come here and turn on F3 notes that it's actually or even here it's actually it's remove whatever extra object inside and make them one object or you can go and hit intersection so it can give you the subject or the part of the object that they create when they overlap or the intersection volume of those and that's the three options available for you uh, union to unify them make them one subtract get first to be removed B or parent to be removed and the intersect is to see the object that uh, actually create when they meet or the combined area between both so that's uh, that's boolean so it's a process to combine one or more objects and as this poor little cat did to the fence so if the fence was A and the cat B that's a A minus B you know because A stays and B goes you know so if the cat stays like this all right so that's mean that the, it's going to show you that's um that's the, the b minus a anyway uh so we have the word here operand that's mean the cat is operand b and the fence is actually an operand a again a whenever you click first so that's the box and that's the cylinder so that's a and that's b now the process you can do usually it's subtraction so it could be a minus b so a stays and b goes like this and the rest is solid as you can see and then b minus a so the cylinders stay and the box goes and that's the effect of cutting here you can find probably you need to rotate this to find that because it was like you know that so when you keep that getting rid of a you're gonna get this result so you might need to rotate your view to get this now union you're gonna make them the same and uh, Max gonna remove everything inside and then the intersection which is the piece that's shared between them other methods uh, cut which I didn't explain at Max it's just to remove the cover and create like a surface object it's like an open bucket and that's the lid or the opening of it removed so that's removed inside and the remove outside to keep the lid part that you remove from the box anyway have other option by the way it's called refine just like to draw an edge based on that anyway I'm not gonna go that detail that's boolean uh, thank god they made pro boolean for us and boolean usually it's really good if you wanna make one cut or one process that you usually don't want to change lots after a pro boolean are more advanced and it's allow you basically to do more than one boolean in the same time and usually boolean crash if you go like uh, seven or six times so each time you need let me show you that it's really annoying uh, each time you go and you want to make another cut for example this is a building and you keep adding windows to it based or doors later on based on the design process so you need to add this to be removed from that object again you have to add another compound another boolean you know and then another add and then you're gonna remove that guy 
you know. And it's really getting harder and harder and heavier each time. One of the time, the third or the fourth and the fifth, it depends on how, you know, Mac's going to consider it. You're going to get a crash, you know, and most of that going to start to have ugly black triangles. Uh, that's the thing that I really hate in Boolean, and lots of Boolean guys hate it. Anyway, it's also harder to amend, so look, we have now two Booleans inside each other, we call it nested Boolean, so if I go to the box here, okay, so that box is actually this box and this cylinder, alright, while that object that I am in is this box, which is this and that, plus the sphere, yeah I know, so I'm gonna go to the modify, you see there's two boolean inside each other, this guy inside this guy, so in order to activate a sub-object modeling or a sub-object modification, as now they are not an entire object, the whole cylinder still exists, but it's a sub-object of the bigger picture, okay, so I'm gonna open that, and I'm gonna hit operand, see, now instead of moving the whole result of the process of subtraction I'm moving only the box and see it's affecting the second one here anyway if I hit the sphere you see I can you know go like this and you know do whatever I want I can change its location and even if you notice that it show me that beneath this I can have the property of the sphere itself and I can make it bigger see all right so this boolean is made of this box, all of it, including this one, by the way, the subtraction, which is another boolean, and the sphere. To activate it, again, I have to select this, open it, hit operand, select it here, and then I can move. Or, sorry, yeah, uh, select operand. Now you can, you know, change the location. If you want to change or change the entire this, the parameter to show you the sphere parameter, you have to select this guy and that will show you the sphere parameters and you can make them smaller or bigger. Anyway, the key is to select this guy, alright. Now if you turn off this and you back to this again, you have to back to the box. Now the box have another boolean inside. So when you select this guy, open it again, yeah I know, you can see like another operand, and now it's made of box and cylinder, which is this guy and this guy that we selected in the beginning. And I'm going to select the cylinder, and I can change its location, or maybe a little bit down, so I can remove all this extra edge that I, want, I don't want. Or I can go to cylinder itself and make it bigger. The same business that we've done with the sphere, or make it even taller, to get all through this, and to get that. Yeah, it's annoying, and we call that nesting. So you have to go and remember which one is containing the other copies of boolean that's why we don't prefer lots of people don't prefer to use the boolean because it have this nesting issue and you don't know it's nested inside the box or nested inside the sphere and here comes the idea of naming object before doing that anyway and i'm going to show you the naming thing before or during sorry the process of making the pro boolean anyhow so get rid of that or put it aside and now let's make our life a little bit easier. So I'm going to go box again. That's my box. And before I go, I will call this whatever I want. Let's make it clear. Let's, let's say my walls or whatever, my main building. Okay. And then I can come here to the cylinder and I can make a cylinder here. And I can call that cylinder south for example south elevation okay and i can go assuming that's south by the way and now i can go here and make another copy of it by the way i can just i'm just too lazy to do another one and just a copy and just go to the modify and i'm gonna call it east elevation remove this extra business and yep let's take a copy here and that's my west elevation and finally from this guy I'm gonna make another copy here looking at the top to make my life easier and that's my uh, north 
elevation. So I have now more than one object. So let's see the benefit of Pro Boolean. Select this guy, which is the walls, and go compound. And from the compound, you go Pro Boolean. Now, the lovely thing that you don't see the operand thing and uh, it's asked you to start picking and again you can do it the old way that click here and keep click thy and you remove it and that, that's the process and subtraction here and then another click and even if you cut that you know that you stopped for some reason and then you added those masses or you remember that you have to remove them later on that's the issue you don't need to go to create do not go to the create and during the exam, I will focus on this, guys, especially for my lovely student here in Ajman University. I will make sure that you didn't go to create geometry and add another pro boolean. That's wrong. All right? It's not boolean. In boolean, you have to keep adding booleans here in the create. In pro boolean, don't, guys. It's really a big issue. So you, we don't need a pro boolean nested inside each other. Just go to modify. See, that's the power of it. It's one and only v1 pro boolean that you need you go ahead and start picking again you know like it's part of the modification process rather than just a creation again like that and voila and the power again another power those are here stored for you anytime you want that's the south that's the east that's the north anyway and you can you know select them whenever you want and change them in the time in the in the, in the way you see suitable for you anyway so first only one boolean and then you go to the modify and start picking that's number one the second is they all stored here and with the well and good naming a well behavior here with the naming and you can see them and you can manipulate them easily without the nesting issue or oh, the third power of that command which i might need to go a little bit of more undos so when you first create it you know, you go start picking, see that? And instead of keep clicking one by one, just hit H to select by name. And you know, now you have that, this guy, and hit Shift and select the last one. So all of the things that have elevation and then pick, and that's the magic. All of them being cut in the same time. Imagine you have a hundred object. So with having a good naming and a good select of hitting H to select by name, you can select them all once in one shot. Now I am still in the modify. I'm opening that guy. Hitting operand. Again, let's do some sub-object modification. Click on the east guy and then go to move. I can move it. And again, guys, that will be a suitable thing to do in the exam. So you have to practice this carefully. You know, you are now doing sub-object modification. And or you go to cylinder and all that will change and you make it bigger and you make it smaller. It's really powerful for you guys in the architectural process to change the width and the location, especially the height of the window. So if that's a window and you discover it sitting exactly on the zero, zero, and then you want to push it up like a five units. Oops, what I've done, sorry, undo. You have to select the operand and then you have to push it five. See, you're gonna do that a couple of hundred thousand times. Each time you deal with Windows beginning, usually you're gonna cut them out and probably you didn't raise them correctly to the correct location. So select this guy and then change uh, and select him here again. And then you can push up. And if you want to change its dimension, select it bluishly here you can see it's changed and then you make the biggest wall anyway so that's about it that's the pro boolean which I highly recommend to use rather than the nesting boolean and it probably it's less prone to crashes guys so that's pro boolean again some pictures I show you that you can cut once with one click especially when you hit H which is select by name and allow you to select the first guy and then with shift select the last guy and that's it <clears throat> now that can actually illustrate for you the the idea of an object modification and sub object modification and you notice that box uh, the box and the sphere actually became one object 
and that we call it object modification but when you try to open the cylinder and uh, which is actually subtracted and you try to hit the operand and select again now you're actually making sub object modification you are not really the, the cylinder is not an object now it's a sub object because it's a part of a bigger complicated model that we call it uh, compound model or boolean or pro boolean so again that's a picture of what I've done and how I move this sub object up or when I go and I increase the radius of it that's again a sub object modification anyway remember the whole key is to press this and by the way lots of options you can just uh, when you create uh, when you create this object you can hit extract and hit copy and or remove uh, it can uh, cancel that and get it back out of your uh, system uh, you can find that extraction here so I find if you need another copy of that guy uh, just hit copy and hit extract and he's gonna give you the cylinder that you created you know anyway or you can remove that by the way and getting rid of this of the entire process of the operand uh, of the boolean sorry it depends on the option you pick <clears throat> now the final advance or the last advanced thing we're going to talk about uh, today is modeling or advanced modeling and it's basically edit mesh modeling and edit poly so in the edit mesh or editable mesh modeling it's a type of modeling by the way it's type of architecture structure for the 3d to max to process and it's understand everything as a tri mesh or a, a, a face that's made of a three vertex or three points so you can look at this very basic uh, very basic uh, house and when you have a faces of it like that which is five edges I actually don't understand it as five rather than three pieces of triangle so it understand everything based on the existence of tri meshes which is that uh, that's the mesh that's the mesh modeling actually and it's really a powerful tool and I wish in the next lecture we're gonna have more detail to talk about them and and I'll show you now in the the sub component for each while the other method and uh, the other method is edit poly and it's basically created based on a polygons that can be made more than of a three sided meshes could be four usually or more actually so for example in the same example of the house so this is the rectangle it's made of four points surface or face here four here four and this guy is five so one two three four five there's no triangular thing so if you go back to the mesh see the mesh triangles it doesn't understand something called rectangle or polygon or sorry or uh, a pentagon or whatever you call it it's just divide a division divide everything into three sided mesh or tri mesh while this guy usually understand more and much advanced uh, uh, surfaces like those four or those five and so on and now I'm gonna show you uh, now I'm gonna show you that in 3d max so probably I need to get rid of those guys so again, again in this method, so we have primitives, that's the first type of modeling, and we talk about 2D modeling with extrude, that's the second type of modeling, compound, and that's the other type of modeling. Now we have a, a different method, which is, let's talk about mesh, which is, again, it's a method of modeling. So you need to create something from nothing, which is the box based on the primitives, and then come on, right click, and convert into convertible or editable mesh sorry now I change the entire structure by the way and into med edit, me uh, edit mesh sorry editable mesh or you can just select that guy and go and add a modifier to it uh, which is edit mesh and that's allow you to get back to the box at a specific point and make it bigger and smaller anyway this guy the edit mesh is much heavier uh, if you compare to right click on it and change the entire structure to convert to editable mesh see the box is being gone so this is lighter on your system anyway 
in this system or in this modeling method, which is the mesh, edit mesh or the double mesh, you have different structure now. You don't have width and length and segments, not anymore. If you hit F4, you see the edges. You have vertices, vertex, which is this point. And again, the vertex is a point that have uh, other lines connected to it, and it's a part of a bigger geometry. So that's the difference between vertex and a point. And you can just change that point up or down, you know, and start creating a much more complicated architecture composition. All right. Or you have the edge, and you have the right to select the entire line, and you can, you know, change it like that. And change this guy all down. You can see this. You can change this, which is the the tri mesh that we talk about, and that's why we we understand this and is it a double mesh. I don't think architect we're gonna love this. So we're gonna go back to polygon, which is again the entire surface. You can make it up and down. You know, like changing the height anyway. And the polygon. <coughs> sorry, that's the polygon. Sorry, this is the element, and it's gonna be selecting all the object. And we're going to see the powerful of this when, you know, when we make a attach. So when we do another object in order to understand or add it to this. So this is an, again, that's an edit mesh. This is a, a, a primitive modeling. So I'm going to select this guy and look for something called attach here. And then select this new guy. Now, both of them are one object. Now I'm finished with the... Uh, object modeling as I see now just open the sub object and hit again you know when we say polygon is faces and then we say element this element again is sub object modeling see now this guy the whole object is a sub object in this big one modeling so I can select this guy you know so that's the power so when I turn off this I return to object modeling and when I goes here I can select this sub-object modeling and I change it by itself. So anyway, that's basically very easy way to introduce you to the mesh modeling. The other way, or the other command that we talked about is the edit poly. And now, if that's my box, you know, I can add uh, a little bit of segments maybe. So if I hit right to click and then convert to edit mesh or edit poly or I can just select that guy and then go edit poly here and see it's made of vertex and then edges and then borders and then the polygon and then you know the element which is the entire object but that's what I wanted to look we don't have triangular meshes so that I think architect will love this much more because it's divide everything to you as based on rectangle and it's allow you to push and pull and we don't call it push and pull here it's not uh, uh, not a sketch up anyway so you can make that a window here or push it outside you know and it's allowed to select a group of objects and push them a couple of times, you know. And then this guy and this guy, and then you push them. It's really good if you want to sketch a conceptual massing in it. You know, a basic concept, try to make something out of those, you know. And you start to make your architectural composition. You have lots of other options, which is bevel, for example. And uh, now, basically, finish for today. It's just an introduction for both edit mesh and edit poly. We're not gonna work in. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna explain that in details for you uh, now. And I just might need you to have a look for the exit route and bevel. Try to go ahead and read in the help or Google or YouTube those in the edit mesh. And also want you guys to go and have a look by yourself on those. Uh, sub command of the edit poly and I wish in the next lecture I'm gonna show you in detail uh, I think we're gonna model the Emirate Towers very basic copy of it and we might need to use some of those tools to get really understanding and have a little practice on the edit poly anyway thank you very much guys and uh, have a good day bye bye